So she told you, I'm Mary Lou Reidinger. I'm an archaeologist. I've lived in Guatemala 38 years, and I went to Guatemala to look, really to solve an archaeological problem. I went there to look for the ancient sources of jade. I found them, uh, so that's what I'm best known for. But during the last 10 years, I've gotten very interested in the present-day Maya and their relationship with their ancestors. So that's become very important to me. And it's always a mystery to me. I've never understood why people always look for uh, simple, idiotic, easy solutions to some great problems. And the, the Maya calendar is one of those. And there are brilliant, elegant solutions to what the Maya calendar was really trying to tell us and what the message of the Mayas was. And so I'm going to sort of launch into that. But first, I'm going to say that uh, I need to get this. Here we go. Um, filmmakers and makers of documentaries and authors wouldn't make any money if they told us the truth about the Maya, which is the Mayas never said the world was going to end in 2012. That's totally ridiculous. In our culture, we have a, the Bible. We have the book of the apocalypse. Uh, we it's very deeply embedded in our brains and we tend to impose that on the Mayas, the ancient Mayas, and think that that's something to do with ancient Maya culture. Um, the Popol Vuh, the Book of Creation of the Maya, uh, was written in stone at Isapa 2,000 years ago and it gives us a very clear message in the Popol Vuh of a world where transformation, rebirth, resurrection, and world without end is the message that the Maya were trying to share with us. So let me see if we can, there we go. So in our culture, we have a tendency to see time as linear. We see past, present, and future. Yep. Uh, in the Western world, we tend to see creation as an event that happened in the past, whether or not we believe in the Big Bang Theory or the book of Genesis, we see creation as a done deal. It's a past tense verb. It's something that happened. It's over and done with. The Maya had a more dynamic view of time. They saw past, present, present, and future fusing together and coming back and spiraling back on each other, and they all come together in time, and they saw parallel universes. We'll go back. Here we go. And the Mayas were excellent observers of the night sky. They observed the events happening in the sky, and they, cr they created their stories and mythologies based on the cosmic mirror, on earth as it is in heaven, as above, so below. And archaeologists realized about 18 years ago that everything in Maya literature and architecture and all of their culture uh, is a mapping of the heavens. So we now know that what they were looking at in the heavens, which is a story in the heavens of constant uh, resurrection and things coming around again and again, uh, that's what they saw as their message of transformation and resurrection and rebirth. So the ancient Mayas spent lifetimes uh, looking at the constellation Orion. They were looking for creation places in the sky. Uh, they wanted to find out their place in the universe and they wanted to find out the reason uh, for the world that they were living in. And they found a very important creation place in the sky in the constellation of Orion. And we're going to look here. Let me see if this little, there we go. These three stars, Al Nitak, Saif, and Regal in Orion, are what they called the hearthstones of creation, the three hearthstones of creation. And right here in the center uh, is the turtle, which we see as Orion's belt. They saw it as the turtle shell that had to break open for creation to happen in the sky. And right here in the center of the three hearthstones of creation is Nebula M4243. Uh, which is right in the center of the three hearthstones. And they saw the whole thing as a major creation center. And let's see here. In the 1990s, the Hubble Space Telescope sent us pictures of Nebula M4243, and they described it as the place where new stars are constantly being born in the universe. 
uh, the Mayas looked at this place 2,000 years earlier and said that's the creation center. That's the eye of Hunabku. That's where creation's happening in the universe. So I have no answer for why they happened to pick the right spot 2,000 years before we got it through modern science, but I think it's a very remarkable fact. And here's the Madrid Codex. I don't need to point at anything there. You can see the turtle, I think, right here. Um, the three hearthstones of creation, the cords of heaven, uh, the two aspects of the sun. And this line here is the ecliptic, which is the imaginary line in the sky, which we see as uh, the, the 12 signs of the zodiac, the Capricorn, Aquarius, Sagittarius, and so forth. So uh, they saw the turtle shell, uh, which breaks open during the first night of creation. And if you read the Popo Vu, you'll learn all about that. And the first sun god, or Hunkunapu, came from the center of the turtle shell. So the Mayas believe that every day there is a new creation when the sun comes up every morning, and that they have to assist in the creation. And so in Maya households every day, you've got the three hearthstones of creation, and you've got the first fire being drilled in the morning to make the tortillas. Uh, so this is a daily ritual among the 12 billion Mayas who are living on the planet today. And what they're doing is they are recreating the sacred space of creation on Earth. Now, we're going to get really scientific here. Uh, this is uh, what the Maya calendar is based on. Uh, it's a, based on a scientific phenomenon, uh, which is the precession of the equinoxes, uh, which is caused by the wobbling of the Earth on its axis and the slow perceived changes of positions of stars in the sky. So when the Mayas were looking at uh, various constellations, but the Big Dipper and Drago were two, they began to realize that, that we were all moving. They began to realize that this is not a stationary universe we're living in. Uh, 2,000 years ago, they began to see that what they thought were fixed stars and fixed gods, and they called this one, I think you can see why they call it Seven Macaw. Uh, it's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and this would be the tail of the macaw floating out behind it as it flies. So this is Seven Macaw, or Siete Guacamaya, uh, seen in the sky, and for creation to happen for the Mayas, the Big Dipper has to fall from the sky, and that's what happens on the night of Maya creation, August 12, 3114 BC. I think we all remember August 12, 3114 BC, when the Big Dipper was falling from the sky, but you can get software and look on your computer and see what the sky looked like on that night. Uh, but the procession of the equinoxes, which right here, if you draw a circle, from the beginning to the end, you've got a 26,000 year cycle. Now the procession of the equinoxes was discovered by the Mayas in about 250 BC. A Greek named Hipparchus discovered the procession of the equinoxes, and so he was a little bit after the Mayas, but all of our scientists have understood uh, the procession of the equinoxes for quite a while. And this is, uh, this is the mouth of the crocodile, which we're about to get to, but this is the dark rift in the Milky Way. This white uh, uh, diagram here is a sort of uh, outline of what the Milky Way looks like. And this is what they were looking at, probably starting about 1,900, 800 BC. And they were realizing that the Milky Way and the dark rift in the Milky Way were slowly moving toward the December solstice sun. And they also looked forward and backward in time because they were brilliant mathematicians and discovered the concept of zero. And when they did their measurements and described a circle, they realized that it was a 26,000 year period of time that they were looking at. So here we are. This is the Milky Way. We all know what the Milky Way looks like. This is the crocodile, because the Mayas see it as the crocodile. That's the eye of the crocodile, that's its nose, and this is its lower jaw. So we see this as the dark rift in the Milky Way. The Mayas saw it for 2,000 years as the mouth of the crocodile. And so that's a creation place, a very important creation place in Maya cosmology. And here we have our sun will align with the dark rift of the Milky Way on December 21st, 2012, and the December sun 
has been in that position for about 10 years every December 21st uh, and will be in there for another 10 years. And so it's a 20-year period, and December 21st, 2012 is the middle of that period where the December solstice, processed winter solstice sun, lines up with the dark rift and the Milky Way. Now uh, this is fun. This is Stella 11 from Misapa Chiapas, the place where the Maya Conservancy is hoping to build a museum. Uh, the date on this monument is 250 BC, and here we have the open mouth of the crocodile. So I'll lead you through this because you're probably not looking, used to looking at Maya art. Uh, this is the eye of the crocodile. There's his nose. There's his lower jaw. He's sitting here. This is his arm or his front leg. These are his back legs. And he's sitting here on the ecliptic, which is always shown in Maya art as a double-headed serpent. So this is all happening in the sky. This is the Milky Way, this is the ecliptic, and whenever you see an X, a framed X like this in Maya art, uh, this is a center of creation, a place of creation. So we've got a place of creation in the Milky Way, sitting on the ecliptic, we're in the sky, and what happens? Here is the December precessed winter solstice sun, and he's holding out his arms, saying this is going to be a very long period of time we're going to have a new period of 26,000 years, and I'm back to where I was 26,000 years earlier, and here I am. So if the ancient Maya in 250 BC could have written December 21st, 2012, this is their statement for that. And just quickly, what happens on the day of creation, because we're coming up for a brand new creation, this is very exciting, in the Popo Vu, we have the hero twins. And the hero twins are constantly being reborn and transformed and resurrected. But what they have to do to make the new creation happen is they have to play a ball game, which is a, a story about the processed winter solstice sun and putting it through the ring, which is the dark rift of the Milky Way. They have to play a ball game against the forces of evil, the lords of the underworld, the lords of Shibalba. If they win the ball game, we get a new creation, and they resurrect their father, Hun Kunapu, out of the turtle shell of creation here. So in Maya mathematics, the concept of zero in Maya hieroglyphs is uh, unbroken turtle shell. And the minute the turtle shell breaks open, we have day one. So this is a manifestation of day one. Here's his son, Hunapu, one of the hero twins, and this is Ishbalanke, the other hero twins, and they are resurrecting their father who died in a previous encounter with the lords of the underworld. So the message we get from the Popo Vu and from 2,000 years of Maya art is Renaissance, transformation, resurrection, and world without end. Thank you.